At number four on the iconic 100 countdown is the 1933 Gaudi Babe Ruth card. It's actually a series of several cards, and we're going to talk about these cards today. Me and Nate at In Cardboard Veritas from Instagram. Nate, number four on the list. What do you think? Uh, I'd say I'm thrilled. I think it's a great spot for it. Uh, you know, I, I think there are three cards that probably stand out to most people in their mind as perhaps the most iconic. I think number four is where it really, you know, you start to have a lot of uncertainty and a lot of cards that could make their case for that spot. And in my mind, I think this card is the one I'd love to see there and I'm, I'm glad it is there. So I, I think it's great. Um, and I think it speaks highly of the folks that participated and, and voted because I, I think it, it truly is a deserving card. You know, I think you can make a case for a lot of different cards in the spot, but I think it's tough to make a case against this card. It's, so, you know, yeah. As, as I, as I conducted, um, as I watched the, the, the votes sort of coming in, yeah. on on all these you know i got to go in and see every time somebody submitted a survey what they thought you know what they yeah. did and and this this is a, a really fun story because um is all of these polls or all of these surveys kept coming in the top three cards were in all sorts of different orders but they were fairly regularly the exact same three cards mm -hmm. i think something like 75 or 80 percent of the lists have the same top three cards um and that's not shocking because mm -hmm. I think there's easily three cards that are the most recognizable and the most iconic in the history of the hobby. Yeah. Number four, I just agree with you. It, it, it was really, it was a lot harder um, to, to settle on a card um, at number four. And um, I'm just looking, I'm just doing a quick math on, on this. It looks to me as though total points and points were represented by votes, both in quantity and in rank. This card is about 20% behind card number three, mm. but it's really close to card number five. Mm. Yeah. It's really cl close to card number six. And, right. and that's, I think I agree with you. That's probably the way that it ought to be, but I'm thrilled to see it here because Babe Ruth isn't just, this isn't just an iconic card. Babe Ruth is, is an icon. Um, and yeah. some of his earlier cards didn't place as well on the list and they didn't place as well because they're so much rarer, right. right? The Gaudi, the series of Gaudi cards, we see them available regularly. And so people know about them. They know the image. They stand out. Oh, I've seen that card. And that's sometimes, you know, other than the Honus Wagner, that's what makes a card iconic is that we see it a lot and it, it comes, you know, it comes available. Um, when you think about the four different variations of this card, uh, you know, this is one of the only cards on the list that has like really different different variations but we we wanted to put them together because we didn't want people to have to choose right um if you had to rank the four how would you do that oh man that's that's tough and yeah i think i think every vintage collector probably has their own ranking for me personally uh i like the the red ruth probably best number 149 okay um and you know it's actually really close for me between that and the 144 which is the swinging sort of full body ruth those would be my top two. And then I'd probably go with the yellow number 53 and then the green number 181, I'd probably put fourth, but I absolutely love all four of them. I, I think they're all, you know, tremendous cards. They feel to me like the kind of cards and I've, I've talked to some of my collecting buddies about this, where it's like, you know, if you, if you look up baseball card in the dictionary, like there should be a picture of one of these cards, you know, yeah. maybe the swinging Ruth 144, especially just you know, just kind of the, the definition of an iconic baseball card and, and image that these create. And, you know, and one of the other great things about them is they come from this incredible set. You know, you talk about um, kind of the, the big three sets of, of um, early baseball cards, and it was the T206s, these 1933 Gaudis, and the 52 tops as, you know, three really anchor sets of, of vintage collecting. And the 33 Gaudis, for me, they, they honestly may be the most beautiful sports card set ever produced. I, I mean, I just, I love them from the commons to the lower level Hall of Famers to the Babe Ruth cards. I think the depth of color and the quality of the, the craftsmanship and workmanship on these cards is, is really, really hard to beat. So I, I think it's just a beautiful set. It was the first set also um, that was distributed in, in packs with bubblegum. 
which became hmm. a really, you know, huge and important part of sports cards and collecting. And when I started collecting in the mid eighties, I'd go down to the, the corner store and buy packs of cards with bubble gum. And, you know, that, that was how I collected 50 or so years after these first came out. So there's a lot of really interesting, you know, another really interesting thing, they're issued right in the middle of the Great Depression, 1933. So it was a, you know, a huge leap of faith by the Gaudi company to, to come out with these cards at that time and think that people would be willing to spend their pennies to be able to, to go ahead and collect them. So it's, uh, it's a really unique and neat set. And, you know, I think the Babe Ruth, you know, the four roots obviously stand at the top of it. So man, you just said so many things that I, that I love that I want to talk about. I, I will only expand on, on the beauty real quick by saying people have talked about like the 1948 leaf set being, you know, inspired by famous artists and the color and all that. What I think is really important to recognize is 15 years before that you had this Gaudi set that has, you know, that has a lot of the same elements. Um, but 15 years is not, maybe we don't think about it being a long time, but, but picture the difference between, you know, 1988 Fleer cards in 2003 Exquisite, that's a 15 year period, you know? Mm -hmm. So to think about how far ahead of their time, uh, you know, Gaudi was, in fact, you had, you had a lot of uh, black and white cards that came after this set. And so, you know, it was innovative, um, both in terms of the gum that you mentioned and in terms of the aesthetics of the card. This card is of, you know, the icon of one of maybe the greatest icons in the history of all sports. Um, and then, you know, you add to it just how, how the, the set has grown in popularity over the years. And I think it's, I think it's very fair to have it again at number four on the all-time list. Uh, I want to thank Nate again, not only for the help on this, this uh, card, but on all the cards that, that we've been able to cover together here over the last few months. Nate, thank you very much for, for taking the time on this one. Tomorrow, we'll be back with those top three cards uh, that Nate and I referenced earlier, and we'll see what order the community put them in. And until tomorrow, happy collecting.